Welcome back to the Rig Review. And today we're going to take a look at the Jad Rig. Jad? Yes, Jad. That is Long Winter Studio. You can see here the list of characters is this character. And if you go to the Long Winter Studio, just check out the characters tab. We'll get you here and you will see a bunch of the characters. And I'm going to go through this one right here and later on this one as well. In upcoming weeks, they have a bunch of cool characters. And it will also be on the Animation Buffet website where I post a bunch of stuff, reviews and just rigs that I find. If you have anything that you want me to post there, send me an email. Of course, I will check it out. And that is that. Let's go to the rig. Here's the rig just in case. This is on my camera view. Just in case you don't have that. I usually have nerves curves on and only the polys. And if that's what you have, this is what happens. Then you have to make sure there are a couple of things activated. First of all, you have to go into controllers. That's when you get to see all of the controllers. The other thing too is that I had this reference. So when you load it in, it comes with reference, but it had actual turntable animation on it. So I unreferenced it, selected everything and deleted the animation. I will let them know to delete that. You don't want existing animation. So just when you hit play, the character will do a turntable turnaround, but that can be easily fixed. But this is the character. I'm gonna turn off color management here and in all of its glory. I can't wait to animate this. I love little robots, but let's go through all the controllers. At the edge, you got the main one. Let's go to the attributes. There's nothing here, but you can not scale. So the scale is not on this controller. You can go on to the second one. Same thing here, right? Scale, no good. If you go to the last one, same thing here, no good, but it gives you a bunch of extra you know, controls where you can move things down. So now if you move this control or whatever, the other one, that's your new pivot. If they want this to fly around or do things, and since you have three of them, that's actually pretty cool. If you select the one in the middle, that is your scale. And it's also at 5.6 by default. I'm not quite sure why this would be at one, but again, check out your scale in your scene, whatever is there, whatever you need. Also on this controller, you have Bendy, Orient and Gimbal. But for now in this version that I have, it actually doesn't do anything. So again, watch out. Let's continue down to the feet. You got your main controller. Whoops, select this like that. And you move this up and you can see this is moving the foot separately. So if you want the knee to continue here, that's here the twist. You have the auto stretch as well. So if you do this and you don't want that, you can do it like this. You can limit this. You have all the different scaling options, right? All of this, you can go crazy. Then there's the snap and watch out that snaps to something pretty far away. You can still take this and then move it back, but it gives you an option for the knee. There is a heel raise that pivots off the front part. There is a roll, let me go back here. There's your heel roll like this is a heel swivel like that and there is a ball swivel and there's a bank in and out and then there's the bank out right so you have to look at the pivot point bank in like this and then the pivot point is on the out like that you do have this here so this is for your leg switch so move that over it goes into fk you can move that around gets a bit of a geometry squeeze there on top so it doesn't intersect i would assume and you got different options here including sub controllers which are turning on down there you also have a little controller here that's for your foot roll like this you also have this one here just for that and all those little bits and pieces and this is just to have uh, the ik version of the toe as well of course this is on both sides let's go up to the hips here you have a little one here you can see this in here so that one will be slight rotate in here currently not activated but you can translate this up and down so the thing is given that you have a robot you can't just do a bunch of stuff organically because it is a robot so you have to be very careful in terms of how far you move things and what you're going to do with it i would have loved actually extra controllers on these plates since you have this here this is because it's bound it's locked but let's pretend you would duplicate also unlock and then center pivot or whatever you want to do you can take this out obviously this is a duplicate right so i can hide this that's what you have underneath but it would be cool to have that and extra controllers for all those little extra bits and pieces so like stuff on the back here i would love to get super detailed on that let's continue here you have that big box here actually let me reference the geometry 
the big box, you have that for your spine bottom, as it says here. There is a scale switch on and off. And if you translate it, you have that with a little bit of a pull there, which is kind of fun. You can see that kind of stretches the geometry, but it gives you some leeway, which is cool. Then we have multiple bigger controllers on the outside. So this is your flex cog, as it says here. This is for the root, right? Moves the whole thing, including the feet. Then you can go inside. There are a bunch, but it seems like it's just one. Yes, this is your spine. So you take this and this is your classic, what I would call the root, where it moves everything except the feet. And you can see there's some stretch in there as well. And then if you go inside, you have that one separately. That's the spine sub. So you have a secondary control right there. You can continue to go in. You have this one here. This is the spine adjust. Uh, it's for all of this here. Can you scale? Just checking. Can you scale? It's in the channel here. Yep. Does it scale the backside? Oh, cool. Like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And of course, you can rotate and do a bunch of stuff. And then, like I said, you got that spine bottom that will do this, which also goes up. So you can see the different spine options. Whoops, I selected, I think, multiple things here. There you go. So you have that to move it like this, the spine middle. And then you have the top part to move just this. And again, you translate out. You can move things out a little bit if you want. But if I go in here, you can see this one. If you take that ball out, so this is called the cog pivot. I can put this here, whatever, wherever you want to put it. Let's take it crazy out the outside. Select the cog and that's where you can see that is the pivot. So you can do a bunch of stuff and the whole thing follows that, which is actually pretty cool. I definitely like that. And before I go up, I know I used this before, but just quick again, that's for your knee to do all of this. You have a bunch of stuff, including scale. It doesn't do anything here though. And then you have this, if you want to do a manual change and you have a PV parent, non-flip, character, spine bottom, and spine top option. But let's continue to go up. Always check in here if there's anything that you miss. There's a bunch of stuff in here if you select these here. So if I move this out, this is the adjust for the neck, as it says here. Let's go back, bring that in. You can see the extra zoom out here. You got two of them. They're slightly hidden in here. But generally, you have that controller here, and that is for the neck. So once you move this, you might see this a little bit. I would love for these little controllers to not be that hidden. I mean, you can do a bunch of stuff with it, right? You can take this out. But it would be neat to have that either maybe on the side here or just a bit more visible. Same thing with the with this. I guess you have to know it, and it makes sense that the pivot is here because that's where it's supposed to be. But maybe there could be an arrow pointing up or something. Something that's a bit more probably intuitive if someone uses this for the very first time. This is the head. So of course you have this. And again, this being robots, this would be your natural pivot. Let's get a bit closer here. You can see how this is set up. So the moment you start going like this, you're gonna start having intersections and weird stuff there. But that is the nature of uh, any type of robotic animation, right? It's gotta be very careful. This has uh, flashbacks to Transformers type stuff. So you gotta be very careful. You have a bunch of stuff here on the side. So this is one love this here again i just love technical like mechanic mechanical robot stuff here but again this will make sense to pivot more like this given the way this is hinged here so if you would do this you're going to have intersection problems so anybody animating this this is not a fault of the rig this is the nature of robots where you can only animate a certain way you have your outer one here for your arm let's go back here you can see the whole thing you also have the inner one for extra control and there's this one here, the arm orient. So that's your translate to move out. It says there is something in terms of rotation. Uh, I need to check out to do anything right now. I must have missed something. But again, this is my first run through here. Two controls for the elbow. There's one and then you have the elbow adjust. So you can move this out. Again, stretching material on a robot is weird, but I like that there's the option because I don't want to be completely limited in terms of what the rig can or cannot do. So I always like when there's that extra stuff here. Again, for hands, you have that. Again, careful when you move this around that you're going to start intersecting. So a lot of uh, interesting puzzle stuff when you animate robots. Here's your arm switch. So IK, FK, you have the arm IK parent, different options, of course. You have the pose, you have the curl, so you got your quick curl on the fingers, but also you have the spread, fan back for like a relaxed pose, like that. 
fan forward, palm cup, and palm spread. Palm cup is always interesting, but again, careful how far you go because it is a robotic design. And of course, all of that can be separate. So you have your fingers here like this, including from part. Just double check, can you? Oh, you can. So you can still modify the look to some degree. Again, careful as you go out there. There's only so much you can do in terms of movement of the fingers. Of course, that is on both sides. Let me just quickly double check something. So when you have this here, you select that. And I want to do an arm switch on the IK. You have scale, but then you have upscale, right? So whenever you are on the controller, all of these will have extra controls, including, for instance, the snap, right? Snaps out over there, just like with the leg, you can move this around, but also the twist. So if I take my arm and actually bend it, then you're going to have the twist like this instead of that or on top of that. Most rigs will have this here, right? As you move your arm, your wrist stays put like a true IK wrist. And I would love for that wrist to not have that, where the wrist follows the forearm and you can turn this on and off. Again, most rigs don't have that. It's actually an exception. And it's rare when I review a rig um, that I find that. But I think it's awesome and every rig should have it. Again, this is the backside. So in terms of rig visibility or control visibility, be great to have everything super visible like this one it's kind of sticks out there but that's actually part of the neck that we saw before that does this there's a scale switch again and then we can go up to the face i would have loved to get some controllers here if that's you know texture based or not but little fans can you animate those fans if you select the head nothing there's isolate translation there's sub controls and isolate rotation as well so you can change certain things here terms of uh, you know animation process then the fun stuff is here too you can move this here and you can see how it looks like it pops from you know screen led screen or opening to opening i think that's super cool that's gonna be super fun you can translate like this you can see this here you can translate left and right here that's your up and down you have a smile to some degree so watch out if you go down it's going to go through a little bit again that's all normal you can bring this back. You can also go into a frown if you want. Set this back to zero. There's a mouth line, right? So you have the line and you have a circle like this. And with the O shape, then you can change into that. So if you go back to a line, and actually undo too much here, but the O shape will do nothing when it's not changed through there, just as a heads up. Then you have the eyes. So here is the bigger controller. You can move everything around here. Right, you can have those shapes there. Scale, no scale, of course not, but you got translates here and there. Then you have this here, and this is gonna be for your eyes opening and closing. So you bring this all the way up, and then you're gonna bring this all the way down. That's your lids closed. I can bring this a bit lower with the main controller, then you can have something like that. Do they completely disappear? No, it would be great. If you had an option, as so you can see this here, this is your translate, translate on the big one and on the small, that's all you have to open. But it would be cool to get something where you can fully disappear or have the, uh, the eye dots disappear. I think that'd be kind of neat because it is a robotic design, right? And then that's where the head is going to look and that's what your eyes are doing. You're going to animate those eyes separately. It would be kind of cool to get a box to move both eyes together as one, to not have it separate. So I would have loved to see an eye box here. I know this is not your traditional eye setup, again, given the robotic design and the display, but sometimes it would just be good for a quick block to take these and then be able to animate them both as one. Or you can easily have create locator, right? bring your locator here, and then you just select this. You can do your parent constraint or whatever it is, right? It's an X and Y, so you're gonna change your options in here. It's gonna be just X and Y. And I'm gonna take the locator, which I should see, select this and do the same thing. Now when you select this, you can move this around. But it will now select both eyes and you can create kind of your own rig add-on if you really need to. But it would be cool to have this all in one. And that's pretty much it. I love it. I love that it's just a cute design. I love the proportions. And I love dealing with, again, the limitations of a, what a rig can do in terms of the robotic design, right? Right. You do something like this and you start breaking things and moving things around. It's going to intersect. You can see this here 
with uh, this, you know, this construction there. I actually love this. I know it sounds like a pain and why would you animate like this? But this gives you, I love having to animate within limitations like that. I think that's super fun. Let me take a look, do a little quick jump or something to see how fast that rig will perform on my machine. Well, I am done with the jump, but guess what? Maya crashed. <laughs> so I reloaded it. This is with that built-in turntable. Uh, I am going to say this is the trust me bro thing. It was actually super smooth jumping, but I am in a foul mood after Maya crashed. It had all of the, it was a side jump. It was like this with all the little pieces rattling. It was super sweet and the crash data is not there. There's no Maya scene to recover. So thank you, Maya, as always, for being so reliably horrible. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, what I noticed though in the animation was that when you select these together and you do this, they're not moving, you know, one up, one up, they, they go like this, as opposed to like this, where they both go up like that. Um, so stuff like that, I would love to have fixed on the Maya scene. So something like this is great, but it should be across the board. So you don't have this happening just because I select things a lot left and right and just do a quick blocking and then I offset. So that is not the sweetest option. Other than that, it was really cool. And again, this is a trust me bro thing. Uh, it's very smooth on my machine with these current specs. <laughs> So I'm going to leave it at that. I'm really not in the mood of reanimating this. I literally spent like 45 minutes. I got way too much into it and all the clackety pieces. And I did the whole thing of taking this apart and and doing all kinds of clanky, overlappy stuff. It was, it was fairly sweet. I'm going to leave it at that. So I still highly recommend this rig. The Maya headaches are always the same. But that is that. If you found this helpful, let me know. Anything in the comments that you want to know. I'm going to go through more of these. This is reloaded here. So let me make this a bit smaller. There are still a bunch of rigs that, rigs that I haven't looked at yet that I want to. And uh, yeah, leave it at that. Thank you so much. If you like this and you don't want to miss anything, of course, subscribe. That's the usual pitch on YouTube. Thank you for watching. And I will see you in my next upload, which hopefully doesn't crash.